Now, as we have discussed in the last class, the process of creation of an inverted index takes certain steps. First, let's consider we have two documents, document one, document two, containing certain words or tokens as we have discussed. The first step is tokenization and linguistic module or linguistic preprocessing. Here I haven't removed the as uh, I haven't removed the stop words. Uh, they are basically now I'm just tokenizing them. So and then sorting them, sorting them first based on the terms that is lexicographical sorting, then based on the doc IDs. Now the next step is basically clubbing them together. So as we can see, Caesar is appearing in document one and document two twice. So this document to the occurrence of document to twice will be clubbed together to make a single occurrence of Caesar. Caesar basically one comma two. One is basically specifying the doc ID in sorry the doc ID in which it is basically occurred this one, and two is basically for both the occurrences of the Caesar here, right? Uh, and from that, we basically discussed on making two separate things. Uh, that is, first is called dictionary, and second is called the posting list. So, this is basically the inverted index, the basic structure of an inverted index, which is consisting of two parts a dictionary and the postings or posting lists, which is basically for each term in the di dictionary, which is basically a linked list. Now, if we look at this inverted index, the general inverted index from the life cycle's point of view, I mean, how they are actually being created and how they are being accessed, there are two basic phases. First is the index construction, where this inverted index, specifically this dictionary and posting lists are being created. And the second is query processing. When these two are accessed to retrieve certain documents. So in the first phase, index construction, they are created. And in the second phase, query processing, they are accessed. So specifically, during the indexing time, this index construction will be happening. And in the searching time, the query processing will be happening. It's intuitively clear, I guess. It's pretty easy to understand. Now, the two things that we want to store for an inverted index is, as we have discussed, a dictionary and a postings or a posting lists. So the goal, the ultimate goal is to allow searching for a term in a dictionary as quickly as possible. Right? So for doing that, we need to adapt certain uh, mechanism or certain steps to make this search as quick as possible. That is the main goal of storing the dictionary efficiently. So in the dictionary, what we will be storing? Basically, we will be storing the term itself. We will be storing the document frequency. What is document frequency? It is basically the count of how many different document this term is basically occurring in. So Brutus, as you can see, it is occurring in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight documents. So the document frequency of Brutus is eight. The document frequency of Calpurnia is four, whereas the document frequency of Caesar is also eight because it is appearing in say eight documents. Okay. Now together with this two, we need to store another thing. Basically this pointer. which is some information, particularly basically it's a pointer regarding the start of the uh, posting list for that term, right? So as we have discussed, this is a linked list. So we need to store the start of the linked list to somewhere, right? So this start will also be stored in the dictionary. This start will also be stored in the dictionary together with the term itself and the document frequency. Why this document frequency is necessary to be stored? 
because based on this document frequency we know how long the linked list is so from 8 we know there are 8 nodes in this linked list from this 4 we know there are 4 nodes in this linked list so along with this document frequency another thing we usually store uh, we will be looking at looking at that uh, later on with more uh, i mean more importance but here let let me just mention it so which is called the collection frequency so a collection frequency is basically the number of times it is the term is occurring all together in the collection so it is basically so if say a term is occurring in document 1 document number 1 say 5 times document number 2 say 7 times and in document number 4 say 2 times then these are basically the, so basically basically this is the document document 1 document 2 document 4 this is for a term t this is basically the term frequency or in short tf of t in d1 Uh, which is basically 5, term frequency of T in D2 is basically 7 and term frequency of the same term T in D4 is basically 2. So, this is, this is another concept called term frequency. Now, that, now the uh, document frequency is basically 3 document frequency of t is 3 because the term t is occurring in three different documents that's why term uh, document frequency is 3 and the collection frequency of t is basically the summation of all the term frequencies basically 14 basically how many times all together the term is occurring in the collection 5 plus 7 plus 2 this concept will be needed or will be discussed in more details during the discussion on retrieval model creation. Now, so we basically need to store these three information. Now, two broad ways to store this. One is using uh, a technique called sort-based dictionary and another is hash-based dictionary. So, whether to choose a sort based dictionary or a hash based dictionary it depends on the number of terms to store together with whether the collection will be changing over time or it will be a static one uh, for this course uh, although dynamic memory is actually dynamic uh, dynamically changeable index indices are actually important for web search but primarily we will be discussing we will be focusing on a static index now now considering the sort based dictionary or the first option for the in, for, uh, at the indexing time uh, in the sort based dictionary all terms will be arranged in a sorted array or in a search tree such as binary search tree in lexicographical order during the searching time if we adopt a sorted array we can actually perform a binary search and if we adopt a search tree uh, during indexing we can actually apply a tree traversal to search for a particular term now if we use a sorted array approach uh, then th there are there can be certain issues now let me just get i mean step uh, i mean one step backward so basically what we are doing is basically given a document or a set of documents we we are making or we are basically performing this indexing app indexing step to get a list so basically there are certain terms in these two documents let's say there are two documents in the collection d1 and d2 uh, our approach is, I mean, uh, what this indexing will be doing is basically it will be making a dictionary containing all the terms that are appearing in these two, uh, in, in two uh, documents 
of course it will be unique terms i mean all the unique terms will be stored together with that we will be storing i mean as i said we will be storing the document frequency as well and for each document we will be storing sorry not each document for each term we will we will be storing the information regarding which document is containing that term now two things to store one is this dict or dictionary and second is this posting lists now if we adopt a sort based dictionary to store this dictionary uh one situation can actually occur so sort based dictionary means we are using a sorted array now if we discuss or if we consider an array as we know the array so let's create an array the type of which will be basically string such as say star s or let me just declare the string as say s having a static size of say 50 which means the string s can actually contain at most 49 characters from 0 to 48 note that this is from the perspective of the c language uh, because it is more understandable from the understandable, uh, I mean, understandable from the point of view of the very basic programming language, which is C. That's why I am taking the C programming as an example here. So again, to have a sorted array, first of all, we need to store, uh, we need to declare that array, and we know the array for an array, all the items should be of same, basically same size, right? Now, this will be basically storing individual terms. Now, we need to have an array which will be storing all the terms, all the terms in this dictionary, isn't it? So, basically what we need is, we need a pointer to that array. Star, say, D, specifying say dict or say dict 50 which is basically a two dimensional array the number of column is fixed to 50 number of rows is basically open we need to actually declare it it is while declaration we have specified a pointer that is while using we need to basically create the uh, the exact memory or allocate the memory to make the number of rows now each row will be basically specifying to individual terms in this dictionary right and together with this term so we are storing the term for the time being we need to store another information at least another information which is basically which, is, which will be outside this. So at least two information we are storing. The first information is basically the document frequency. So let me just create it. And so on. So this will be basically the term. This will be basically the document frequency. And this will be basically the pointer. Right? pointed to the link list this now the problem so it is important that all array entries are of the same type same size now consider a term we are storing so we have declared a maximum size of say 50 we are assuming that all the terms that we will be storing in this dictionary will be having a size less than 49, less than or equals to 49. Because the last index, as, uh, as I hope you can remember, it is reserved for the null character to get stored, right? We cannot actually ensure, or I mean, I mean, I mean, no. I mean, we, uh, I mean, the best we can do to declare the size is basically considering the highest size term in the collection, isn't it? If in a collection, 
there are terms like a and the together with say institution so institution we know there are uh, how many characters basically four uh, eight 11 characters all together right so to store this 11 characters along with the terms like say a n and so many other characters we need to have the array entry set to or the size set to at least 11 and if we set 11 for these terms like a n or any other terms having size less than 11 will be basically left empty which is basically a waste of memory so if the size is say say 50 and if I am storing only the term, say, uh, say I R, so only the term I am storing, say I R, then I is stored in the 0th index, 0th position, 1 is stored in the 1th position, the 2th position it is slash n, uh, slash 0, sorry, this is a null character. So from the third location up to the 49th location, it is basically all stored this slash zero, right? Which is basically a waste of memory. Particularly, if we store this term, this, this information like Indian having six characters, Institute having uh, four, six, sorry, nine characters, two characters, Science is uh, again seven characters, Education, four, three, uh, nine characters, and three characters, and so on, excluding the slash, uh, slash zero or the null character, ending character. In this case, up to this, we basically need to declare a, uh, an array of size at most nine, at, at least nine. And if we declare the size as nine, it will be, I mean, we will be basically wasting time for three here, 0 here, 7 here, 2 here, this is 0 again here, this is again 6 here and so on. This is basically if we consider each character is taking one byte of memory, which is not actually true for Unicode characters, uh, but still, if we consider an English character, so basically this much of a name, uh, this much of bytes, if we sum them up, this is the wastage, wastage of memory. Right? So this is a drawback of using this sort-based dictionary. And this type of fragmentation in the memory is called internal fragmentation. Because we have allocated a memory space like this, but we are using only this much. And this much of memory is basically alloc allocated but not used, which is internal fragmentation. All right. The next option is using search trees, where the options can be. So again, our ultimate goal is to make the search as, as quickly as possible. So here, if we have used the sorted array to store the dictionary, we could have applied the binary search, isn't it? So individual words are basically sorted. So all the terms with A, then say all the terms with B, up to say all the terms with Z. Uh, they are basically being sort, uh, stored here, say, in this dictionary. So we could have applied one binary search on this dictionary to get the corresponding posting list. Because as I said, we will be storing the document frequency along with the pointer. From the pointer, we can actually get the posting list. But the problem is this internal fragmentation. For the second approach, that is search tree, what we will be doing is, we can actually make a node containing the term, a pointer to the left subtree, a pointer to the right subtree together with that two other information like the document frequency and the pointer 
pointed to the posting list. So during writing the program on binary search tree, we have seen that there are three information that are needed to be stored. The information itself pointed to the left, left subtree, pointed to the right subtree. Together with that, we need two other information. That is the document frequency. And another is basically the uh, pointer to the uh, posting list of that term. Again, our ultimate target is to search the dictionary as quickly as possible. Now, a basic problem with this approach is binary search tree, we can actually get a very skewed tree, a very right skewed maybe. For example, if I start the indexing process with some term like a quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, whatever comes after this, as a is the first term we are occurring, uh, we are encountering, a will be the root. And any term, uh, I mean, any consequent terms will be basically going into the rightward direction of this binary search tree. So we uh, can actually end up with a very right skewed tree. So the, uh, the, the solution to this skewed, I mean, to overcome this kind of uh, uh, skewedness is basically using an AVL tree, which is a height balanced one. Another is using a B tree, which is basically in case we want to access multiple terms altogether, we can actually use a B tree, in which case uh, multiple terms uh, are saved in the same node. So in this case, basically, there are three information or three terms are being stored in three in the same node with having four pointers, four pointers to four subtrees. Okay. Together with that, there are certain trees which are very useful in IR in certain uh, certain uh, applications. The first of them is called try. So try is basically came from the term retrieval. So you can see R E T R I E V A L. So from retrieval, the try term has come into picture. So it is a tree for which or in which the individual nodes are basically a character. So if we want to store the term, uh, say, apple, we will be basically making a tree which would look like this. From A, A will be a character in the node. Another, uh, fr from there, it will, there will be a pointer to P. From P, there will be another pointer to P. L and then E. Now the advantage of this tree is we can actually perform a search based on the order of the length of the term. If I want to store ant, A N T, from A there will be another pointer to N. and another pointer from n to t. In case we want to store the term say n, from a there will be a pointer to n, from n there will be a pointer to none. So from the end there will be, for each of them there will be a pointer to a none character or a null character, which will be basically specifying, this is, this is I am writing slash zero, pardon my bad handwriting here. Uh, which will be basically specifying the end of the end of the word. So a n from n there are, I mean, if we are searching with a n, we will be searching. Uh, I mean, we will be searching for the path from a to uh, slash n or a null character. In between, there are two characters, which is a and n only. This is a specific type of a tree called try. We will be discussing this a little bit in details later on. 
another type of tree is called split tree which is basically a type of binary search tree but it is not height balanced it is based on the frequency with which we are accessing certain terms or certain items all right so the next approach other than the i mean uh, sorting sort based approach is basically using a hashing technique so using hashing at the time of indexing what we will be doing is each term of the dictionary or, or or the collection will be hashed into an integer over a large enough space and if we know that number of terms to store basically the number of terms uh, unique terms in the dictionary in the collection uh, we can actually choose a particular i mean a, a, a hash function based on that to avoid the collision collision means same terms having the same uh, uh, same uh, address assigned by this hash function i hope you can remember this from your uh, earlier uh, classes on data structure so basically if say a term say t1 having a ha i mean a hash function is giving the term say x and for another term t2 it is giving another address say y and if x equals to equals to y it is called basically collision note that here x and y are basically some long integers some integers which will be basically so for hashing it will be basically making a table a table such that there will be say two columns the first is the term itself t and together with that the other information like df and uh, uh, the pointers where this t will be stored is basically set by this function so t1 will be stored in so if i call this so let me just clean it here so if i so let's say this is the hash table let me call it say ht hash table now t will be stored so hash table is say containing items from say 0 to m so m plus 1 number of items or terms can be stored so a term x will be stored oh, sorry a term t1 will be stored in the basically if i use the array uh, indices so in the xth index the term t1 will be stored why because this function this hash function uh, when applied with this term t1 is actually giving us out uh, giving us the output of x so this is basically the index at which this term will be stored so using which using this kind of a hashing technique we can actually store the dictionary in the memory so if we know the number of terms to store we can actually avoid the collision by using an appropriate hash function if we do not know this in advance uh, an auxiliary structure can also be used so basically if there is a collision let me just go back here if there is a collision that means collision means already so if for say another term say m say for uh, so, so le let's say another term came into picture say m applying the same hash function h it is giving us the same output x and as mx uh, sorry mtx is already taken there will be so if i consider this is the xth index here t1 is stored if again m is being mapped to the same x mapped to the same x here from here we can actually create a linked list to store the collided entities or collided items as well this is called hashing uh, i mean uh, collision avoidance or not actually co collision avoidance but collision handling so at the time of querying each term is hashed separately to get corresponding posting or corresponding uh, posting list so basically from here we will be storing along with the term itself we will be storing the posting to it 
uh, posting of that uh, point uh, of that term as well like it is it will be appointed to certain other link list which is basically the posting list of that term so while querying uh, each term will be has to get the corresponding posting lists and we can actually perform the searching now the advantage of this is basically it is it will be very fast it will be of order of time one as compared to linear search in which case it will be order of n where n is the number of terms in case of a binary search it will be log n and in case of so it is binary search it is linear search for hashing it will be order of one but there are certain disadvantages as well like to find a minor variant of the of a query term let's say we are storing we are not using stemming so we are storing institute as well as institutional so both of them uh, will be mapped to can be mapped to very far apart from each other insti institution and say institutional or say institute okay they are we know that they are very close to each other from the point of view of the semantic meaning but if we use a hashing h of institution can be say say any any it's a p and h of the same hashing function when applied on the uh, with the institute term it can be say q and this p and q these two integers can be far apart from themselves which is to find a minor variant of the query term we need to apply or we need to i mean there is no straightforward way like it is of course better to keep them kind of together like we did while performing the stemming right so i mean while performing and the, the main intuition behind applying stemming is to keep them together as a single entity right now to avoid this this kind of an issue we need to actually i mean if we really want to apply hashing we should be performing a stemming beforehand to find all terms beginning with a specific prefix say we want to get all the terms with that with the prefix uh, say ind we need to get all the terms with say india indian and and on all all terms starting with say ind so this is a basically regular expression specifying all terms starting with ind ind star this is not actually possible for phrase query and uh, for phrase query basically let's say if we want to uh, search for the terms information retrieval there are two terms there is no way to get them because with information we will be getting some to some place with retrieval we will be getting to some other place or two different posting lists again we need to actually merge them like we did while performing the searching with the uh, with the inverted index that we have discussed earlier here there is no straight forward way other than to merge I and mean, to adapt that technique but we know that information and retrieval is a phase like it's i mean a phrase query like like i mean you, i i hope you understand what uh, the, the the concept that i i want to uh, specify using the term phrase so information retrieval is a phrase also say united states of america it is a phrase containing four terms hong kong it ca can also be considered as a phrase phrase with two terms if we if we apply this kind of a hashing with the individual terms we will be needing to perform this uh, uh, posting list overlap uh, that we have discussed earlier we cannot actually avoid that it is actually a little bit time consuming and the final disadvantage is basically not being able to perform uh, uh, i mean basically a, i mean wild card query which is basically the combination of these two 
wild card query means in which case the query is not specifically stated like like i have said i want to get all the terms starting all the terms starting with ind this is basically called a wild card query so this is the disadvantage of using a hashing in this scenario to store the dictionary